Hello, welcome to part two of the lesson on alternating current and voltage. I'm assuming you've seen and understood part one and that we can just continue. In this part we're going to take a look at the root mean square or RMS values of voltage and current and how they're used to do power calculations. Let's start by looking at this very simple circuit, top left. There's an AC supply, symbol two terminals and a wavy line. And we're going to supply a 2 ohm resistor. Here's the waveform of the current, graph of current against time. It's sinusoidal. That means it mathematically follows a sine curve. And what's happening is the current starts at zero, the current gradually increases to a maximum of 10 amps and then decreases to zero, then the current reverses direction and grows in size to minus 10 amps and then goes back to zero and it's continuously changing values. It's a sinusoidal oscillating alternating current. Let's work out the peak power, the power when the current is the maximum, which is 10 amps. We can use I squared R and use I peak squared R, in fact, to get the peak power. That's 10 amps squared times 2 ohms. That's 200 watts. That means when the current's 10 amps, the power is 200 watts. When the current is minus 10 amps, the power will be minus 10 squared times 2, it will also be 200 watts. It will be, po uh, be positive because the heating effect, the power production, doesn't depend on the direction of the current, whether it's positive or negative. When the current is other values, the power will be less, of course. If the current's zero, the power will be zero. So we can ask, what would a graph of power versus time actually look like? If you want to pause the video, you might like to think about that for yourself, and I'll give you the answer in a moment. Well, a graph of power versus time looks like this. On the y-axis, I've got power in watts, and it goes up to the maximum of 200 watts. That's what we worked out just a moment ago. When the current's 10 amps, the power is 200 watts. When the current is minus 10 amps, the power is still 200 watts. And of course, when the current's zero, the power will be zero. And we get this curve. Now, it's, it looks like a sine curve. And in fact, it, it is a sine curve that's been shifted, so it's not going between positive and negative values. But the shape is that of a sine curve. And it's got twice the frequency as the current. And the interesting thing about a sine curve is it's symmetrical about the middle. So we can ask, what is the average power? You might want to think about that before I tell you. You might want to pause. What do you think the average power will be for this pattern of power versus time? The average power, well, I've marked it in red. It's 100 watts. It's right in the middle between 0 and 200. That's because of the shape of a sine curve, or this shifted sine curve. It's symmetrical about this red line, and the red line is in the middle between 0 and 200. And we can say that the average power is 100 watts, and it's half the peak power, which is 200 watts. That's a consequence, a consequence of the shape of the curve a sine curve. In fact, for a non-sinusoidal waveform, for example, if you start with a non-sinusoidal current, the average power could well not be half the peak power. But in this case, it is. That means we've got a way of working out the average power dissipated by a sinusoidal alternating current. That shouldn't say an, it should say a sinusoidal alternating current. Here's a resistor, alternating current I, alternating voltage V. The average power, which I'm just showing as P, is half the peak power. So for example, if I know the peak voltage and the peak current, I can multiply them and take half of it to get the average. So the peak power is V peak squared over R. If I divide by 2, half value, I've got the average power. The average power is half the peak power. 
Now let's look at the equivalent DC circuit. I've got our circuit on the top left here. Suppose we set up a circuit with a cell providing a steady current. We could ask what current is needed to produce the same power as the alternating current circuit, 100 watts, same resistor 2 ohms. And it's easy to work out. Power is I squared R. For the DC circuit, it's 100 watts is I squared times 2 ohms. I squared is 50, so I is root 50, which is 7.07 .07 amps. This value is a very important value, 7.07 .07 amps. It's the steady current which would produce the same heating effect, the same power output as this alternating current with a peak value of 10 amps. So think about that carefully. It's the steady current which produces the same heating effect, the same power output as this alternating current. And we give it a special name. We call the value the root mean square current. And the symbol is IRMS. And its value in this example is 7.07 .07 amps. I'll explain later why it's called the root mean square current. Notice that the average power is easy to calculate if you know the root mean square current. The average power is simply IRMS squared times R. 7.07 .07 squared times 2 will give us 100 watts. It turns out that providing it's a sinusoidal shaped current, the RMS value can easily be calculated. It's the peak current over the square root of 2. So if I divide my peak current value, 10 amps, by the square root of 2, I get 7.07 .07 amps. That's a steady current, which is the same power output as this alternating current. You may want to know why it's root 2. Well, I'll explain shortly. The same argument applies for voltage, of course. If I've got an alternating voltage, peak value of 6 volts, supplying a resistor of 4 ohms, for example, you might want to check for yourself that the average power is 4.5 watts. I've done it. I'm not going to go through it. If you go to the DC circuit, we can ask what steady voltage applied to the 4 ohm resistor would give the same power. It's easy to work out using P is V squared over R. We want the power to be 4.5 watts. We know the resistance is 4 ohms. We have to find V. And if we do it, V comes to 4.24 volts. So a steady voltage of 4.24 volts would have the same power as this alternating voltage, peak 6 volts. And we call this 4.24 volts the root mean square voltage, V subscript RMS, 4.24 volts. And just like current, there's an easy way to work it out, providing we've got a sinusoidal waveform. The RMS value of voltage, VRMS, is simply the peak value divided by the square root of 2. So if I divide 6 by the square root of 2, I get 4.24 volts. That's the steady voltage that would produce the same power as this peak voltage alternating supply. Let's see where this root 2 comes from. We know that average power is half the peak power, providing it's an alternating, uh, so, sorry, a sinusoidal waveform. And average power is I, I RMS squared times R. Peak power is I peak squared times R. Half of it, divide that by 2. If we look at the top equation, we can cancel out the R to get a middle equation. And then if we take the square root of both sides, on the left we get I RMS. And on the right top is I peak, and on the right bottom it's the square root of 2. That square root of 2 comes from taking the square root at the last step and the 2 that we start with, the average of the peak power, half the peak power. OK, that means we've got a handy way to work out average power. If we know the root mean square current and we know the root mean square voltage, then if we've got a resistor R with alternating current and voltage, the average power, which I'm just calling P, is easy to work out. It's our standard formula, V times I, providing we use the RMS value of voltage and the RMS value of current. Then we work out the average power automatically. And the other formula work the same way. So for example, if you know the RMS voltage, the average power is RMS voltage squared over R. 
if there's any resistances to deal with in our calculations well the same the normal relationships apply so if I divide VRMS by IRMS it's a resistance and of course if we know the peak voltage and current the ratio also gives the resistance here's a question for you to try I've got a 2.00 kilowatt electric kettle a 230 volt RMS supply, that's what we use in the UK. 230 volts is the RMS value, not the peak value. So, questions. What's peak voltage? What's the resistance of the heating element? And what is the RMS current? If you want to pause the video and try these for yourself, get a pen paper calculator, it's well worth doing. I'll go through the answers in a moment. Okay, what's peak voltage? Well, the RMS voltage is peak over root 2. If you rearrange that, the peak is root 2 times the RMS. Root 2 is about 1.414. RMS voltage 230. That gives 325 volts. What's the resistance of the heating element? Let's use P is V squared over R. V RMS. We use the RMS value of voltage. 2000. It's a 2 kilowatt kettle. 2000 is 230 squared over R rearrange that, R is 230 squared over 2000 and give the answer to three significant figures like the power was given to three, sorry yes the kettle's power was three significant figures it's 26.5 ohms and what's the RMS current? well use P is V times I, RMS values 2000 is 230 times the RMS current so the RMS currents 2000 over 230 to three significant figures 8.70 amps let's just briefly turn, explain where the term root mean square comes from and we know the average power is I RMS square times R another way of writing that is, is on the right hand side here I'm using angle brackets to mean average value of something here so this means the average value of power and it equals the average value of I squared times R. That's an important formula. The average power is the average value of I squared times R. Now if you compare these two equations on the top line, you'll see that I RMS squared is equal to the average value of I squared. So I RMS is the square root of the average value of I squared. That's where root mean square comes from. It's the root of the average mean is another word for average so it's the square root of the mean of the square of the current root mean square current that's it a word of warning before we finish what we've explained above works perfectly for resistors but if we've got circuits that contain capacitors and or inductors that means coils maybe things like motors circuits like that behave differently to resistors they can temporarily store and release energy they're called reactive circuits and we have to calculate power in reactive circuits differently so we can't use what we've learned for reactive circuits also if the circuit con is non-linear that means it's got, got things in it that don't obey Ohm's law for example diodes for non-linear circuits we've got to work out power differently as well that's more advanced work if you study electronics or electrical engineering you'll learn how to deal with that and that's all we need to say so thank you for watching <laughs>